In this new research paper, researchers are trying to basically replicate OpenAI 01, the thinking process of it, and they are doing that by training the AI to train itself. So the AI is generating training data, they use that data to, to train the AI, and then that better version is generating training data again, and then it iteratively improves itself. And they also train it to use the thinking process that OpenAI 01 has. My understanding of this paper is on level three, where I basically understand everything, methodology, proofs, code, etc. Mathematics, this is actually quite simple to understand paper. So according to recent research, uh, many experiments show that think step by step chain of thought only helps when there is a lot of intermediary calculations. So the model can keep track of everything. The improvements on benchmarks mainly comes from the parts of benchmarks that are mathematics or similar reasoning steps. That's explaining this uh, to chain of thought or not to chain of thought research paper that's uh, published recently. Each token in a transformer has a fixed compute. So regardless of how complex the query, the question is of the user, uh, the next token is going to be generated with the same compute budget. So harder queries do not get more budget to solve the next token. One approach to increase the computation budget uh, for the next token generation is to use chain of thought. However, this paper that I just mentioned, which is meta-analysis of chain of thought papers and their own implementation and experiments, found that uh, chain of thought is only useful for math and logic. With this paper, they focus on general thinking, which will help not just with maths and logic, but also, for example, with uh, marketing, uh, writing a novel, etc. They say that every sufficiently complex task will see an improvement using this method. And they also mentioned that uh, recent release of OpenAI 01 further motivated and uh, supported the idea for this research. One of the challenges in teaching models how to think is that when humans are writing on the internet, we are not writing our whole thought process, so we omit that. So in the pre-training data, there is no human thinking process, there are just the outputs. The same goes for the human-generated data by these AI companies who do reinforcement learning and fine-tuning and stuff. It would be very expensive to uh, put all of the thought process of the data writers into the training data. In this paper, they use this thought uh, preference optimization to train LLM to think generally, not just with maths. The LLM is first instructed to produce an output sequence that can be divided into thought and response parts. The thought part is considered internal and not part of the response shown to the user. We optimize this thought and, and response output through iterative reinforcement learning from AI feedback training. Then they also have a judge model that's trained to judge the responses of this AI model. And this is going to implicitly judge the thought process because the response is going to be better if the thought process is better. The advantage of this is they don't need uh, a special judge that is trained to judge the thought process. They can just uh, use the current judges that already judge the output. So the main difference between these other also recent works is that they don't explicitly explain to the AI how to think. They just uh, judge the result and let the AI learn to think by itself. I'm talking about this paper that we are reading. This paper uh, lets the AI learn by itself. Then they take these models, so their model that they added thinking to, and they compare it to the exact same model without thinking as I'm understanding this. I think it's a little bit unclear here, but that's what I'm getting from this. And they have these win rates, so 52% and 37%. Uh, now, I think if it's the win rate is 37%, it's losing, but they say here that like both of them are winning. So this is a little bit unclear to me. So, but I believe them. Like these models that have internal thinking with their process, uh, they are winning against models that don't. And they are not just winning on mathematics and stuff, they are also uh, winning on general knowledge, marketing, and health. So maybe uh, by obtaining a strong win rate of 37%, maybe there is some increase in win rate or something like that. So I'm not sure uh, because 37% would mean like the other guy wins 63% of the time. This opens up a new opportunity to develop thinking LLMs aimed at general instructions following uh, rather than specializing in more narrow technical fields. Let's take a look at the general idea of this uh, research. So they have some user instructions, but then they say uh, think before responding before those uh, instructions. They prepend this, pass it through an LLM, 
and then uh, they sample multiple outputs. So uh, it's going to be divided into thought and response. And then they pass these multiple outputs into a judge model. And then it's going to evaluate only responses, so not the thoughts. It doesn't see the thoughts. And then it's going to choose the best output here. And then we're going to train back the LLM based on these best outputs. So now uh, let's dive deeper into this and what this uh, DPO training is. Ideally, thought generation should be simple and compatible with existing LLM infrastructures. So now let's take a look into this uh, thing before responding prompt. So this prompt, uh, they have two examples here of what they do. So the first is generic th thought prompt. Respond to the following user query in a comprehensive and detailed way. You can write down your thought process before responding. Write your thoughts after here is my thought process and write your uh, response after here is my response. And then they give user query. And then they have specific thought prompt. Respond to the following user query in a comprehensive and detailed way. But first, write down your internal thoughts. This must include your draft response and this evaluation. After this, write your final response after these uh, R tags and then give the user query. So the specific prompt asks for a specific thought format, writing a draft and evaluating it. We will see more examples of this if it's unclear. So the first prompt is very general and it leaves to the model to uh, choose the thought process. And the second one tells the model that it should uh, write a draft response and its evaluation. Such specific prompts give us more control over the content of the thoughts, but also requires expert knowledge about what type of thoughts are helpful in LLMs. So usually you want to hide this thought process because a user does not care about it, maybe because it's going to be making mistakes, dragging, uh, drafting responses, evaluating responses, and understanding the question better. But you would want to show this thought process for the purpose of interpretability, for example. A little bit of a funny trick here is because this chain of thought uh, thinking process is hidden, you don't even need to spend computation in like uh, converting it into natural language. You can just maybe use like the tokens and whatever. But now they will convert the thinking process into the natural language so they can understand like what's happening and interpret. Now, just uh, these prompts that tell the AI to think, they can actually underperform than directly asking for the answer because LLMs are heavily optimized for like directly giving the answer. So uh, this happened even in other research papers where like telling you to think step by step made worse uh, answers for some of the areas that are not mathematics and uh, logic. So for their training process, the iterative improvement, they just use a bunch of uh, researches from before. So they're going to use uh, reinforcement learning from AI feedback from these papers. And these papers sound very uh, interesting because like AI is improving itself. So I might make videos on these where we generate from the model and rank its responses using a reward model that acts as a judge. We use iterative direct preference optimization for its simplicity and efficacy. So uh, in their reinforcement learning from AI feedback, they're not going to give also the thought process as in this paper. They're just going to give it the result because there is not enough data to train a judge model uh, on like the thought process of humans. And even if there was, maybe that uh, data would not be the best or better than what AI could like learn to do itself. Secondly, the ultimate goal is to provide better responses to the user. Thus, it might be better to optimize the final objective instead of relying to an auxiliary objective that might not align well. Now we got some maths. As soon as I saw maths, I scrolled down in hope that there is not much and there isn't much so and this these uh, look quite simple so let's go mt is the model t is just uh, if because they have multiple models so t is the number of the current model uh, p is their prepended prompt that says like think step by step the prompts that we read and xi is uh, the data set of the instructions so they have one instruction do this do that there uh, for the ai and for each of these instructions, uh, we get the thought process and the result, the output of the AI. Then uh, they take the instructions. 
So this is the task that model has to solve. They omit the prepended instructions, like take step by step their prompt that we read. So they don't put that in. And they also take the output and they omit the thought process, just input output, instructions result. And they pass that through this judge model. And this judge model takes uh, one instructions and one uh, output and creates a scalar score, like how good the output is based on these, like this task. So next, what they do, uh, it's a bit unclear to me, like the way either they explained or I didn't understand, but as I understand so, uh, each of the model, it's gonna, it's gonna output multiple different like responses for the same input. So they just run it multiple times. And then they score each of those responses based on the input. And then they uh, just take the best score and the worst score and omit everything in between. So they create pairs. The pair is the pair has like uh, for this input, this is the best output and this is the worst output. And then they use that to further train the model. So this is how they mathematically write it. So if you look at uh, this formula up here, so we have instructions plus task gives uh, output, uh, sorry, thought process and output. And so they just copy that same formula here and same formula here. But uh, this is the maximum score one, the best result, and this is the minimum score, so the worst result. So the only difference is in uh, this part and this part. And these instructions are the same, just different outputs, uh, best one and worst one. I would like to correct one mistake that I made, uh, that I realized after reading this. So this MT, uh, this is not like, the, this T does not uh, mark different models. This is version of this model. So they start from M0. This is the base version of this model. They generate this training data and then they train that base model on that training data that's, that's it generated itself. And then that's going to become M1. So the better version now, the trained version. And then they generate the training data again with that M1 and then they uh, feed it back, train this M1 to make it M2. And so these are the versions of the model, the imp improved versions. They use this uh, DPO loss to train their model. And according, so this is the paper, direct reference optimization from a few months ago. And according to Claude AI uh, summary, DPO aims to provide a more straightforward and efficient way to incorporate human preferences into large language models, potentially making it easier for developers to create AI systems that behave more in line with human values and expectations. They also tried these other uh, loss functions. Another problem that uh, they had is that these judge models often prefer longer responses. So as they train the model, the responses are going to become longer and longer. So they introduce this punishment for longer responses. So they have this normalization function and L is the length of the response. And so they subtract the mean and divide by standard deviation to normalize it. And here they punish uh, the scores, the model. So first they normalize the scores and they normalize the length. So they are roughly uh, the same size. And then uh, this row parameter controls the strength of this uh, punishment, this reduction. And then that becomes the new score. Let's take a look into this table. So uh, they have this LAMA 3 8B instruct model. It performs uh, this well and this well on this eval and this eval. So LC means uh, length control. So there is this like punishment that I was explaining earlier for length. Then if they just give it the thought prompt, this is interesting. Just they give it the prompt to think step by step, generate thoughts. It performs worse. And this is consistent with the previous research because these models are trained to directly output, not like perform the thought prompt. And then we have direct response baseline and their model. So what is this direct response baseline? Well, first let's explain their model. So their model performs the best, but they want to test if it's uh, because of the, like the thinking in the beginning. So they actually do the same training as for their model, but without this uh, thought prompt that says like, think step by step first and, uh, and separate thoughts and then separate response. So in this uh, training, they just tell it to generate response directly and then they create uh, best worst pairs and then they feed that model to create a next generation, etc. So as it turns out, 
the thought process uh, helps better than just like without thought process. And then they compare them to the large models here. So it performs better than GPT-4. Actually it performs better than all of these here. So 70B instruct Mistral, Large and Quent uh, 72B. It, for example, does not perform better uh, in this case, in this arena hard on like these ones. They explained like the exact experiment like here, but this is just dry and unnecessary. If you want to reproduce it, then you would uh, read this section. They say that this small 8B model that they trained performs just below GPT-4 Omni and GPT-4 Turbo on the third place, which is pretty impressive for uh, this small model. So these are their training images on these two data sets. We are comparing direct baseline and TPO. So both of them train in the same way, but just TPO has this like thinking process and direct baseline is answering immediately and then using the best answer to retrain the model and improve. And we see because uh, these models are trained to answer immediately by reinforcement learning and post training, then it starts with better direct baseline than this TPO. But as it trains more and more than TPO and thinking uh, overtakes the direct answering in both of these data sets. Here we have this table that compares different uh, judges. So we are again training iterative self-improvement uh, without thinking and with thinking. And so in the first generations without thinking performs better. But as we go more and more generations then uh, thinking process improves and it overtakes the without thinking, no thinking process for all of these judges and data sets. Here the main difference between this paper and the previous papers is that the improvements are not just in math and log logic but also in like health and wellness, general knowledge, personal development and these like not so logical uh, areas. And here we have some actual examples. So the instruction is to write a poem in this style and then uh, these are the thoughts which are not shown to the user and then this is the poem. So they say that this uh, showed improvement and then this poem is better because of these uh, thoughts and I believe them, I guess. So the evaluation they did here on this poem is uh, trust me, bro, and I, I trust them, bro. <laughs> but also uh, judge model also uh, judged these responses as better. So we, they have that as well. And uh, this is another like example question that is not reasoning and logic. Uh, what breed dog is smallest? And then there is like this uh, draft and then the improved version here. So like main point here that's more, most interesting point is that they don't explicitly tell the AI like how to do this step by step. It just trains it, it by itself. Then they get into these technical details of how to reproduce uh, this training. So I think I'm going to skip this one. But if you want me to like do this as well, this is a bit dry, but just tell me like in the comments below and I'm going to do this in the next as well. In conclusion, they hope uh, that this will lead to wider adoption of thinking LLMs in non-reasoning domains, not just math and logic. They mentioned that in some evaluations, math's performance was worse and they believe that this is because this model training was not set up specifically for maths and the judge model was also not so good at maths. Below that we got a bunch of uh, references and below we have uh, more technical details on how to like uh, reproduce these tests and more of, more of the details on the results. So I think uh, if you want to know more you should uh, read this and I think I should not be explaining this so I'm gonna be making more of the paper reviews videos. Uh, see you in the next video.